Hi there, it is Jo from Minerva and today we're going to take a look at putting on waistbands. There are lots of different ways to put on waistbands, it depends what pattern you have. So um, you might have a waistband in two pieces or you might just have a simple waistband that folds over. There's a few phrases and techniques that are used in waistband instructions so I'm going to hopefully demystify those and I'm going to show you two examples of putting on waistbands. One is a uh, waistband with a facing so that's because it's a curved waistband and the second one I'm going to put on is a flat waistband um, which folds over and I'll show you how to finish the raw edge. The first thing to note about a waistband is how you cut it in the first place and I didn't know this for quite a long time so I would lay all my pattern pieces out and wherever I'd got a sort of longish strip um, on my fabric I'd think oh well my waistband piece fits there but actually you need to be cutting your waistband on the straight grain of the fabric because if you cut it on the cross grain then your waistband is going to be a little bit stretchy so your waistband will stretch out quite quickly so really take note of the grain line on your waistband paper piece and make sure that you're using the straight grain so the straight grain is when it is parallel to the selvage edge. Before you sew your waistband you might be asked to interface it or strengthen it in some way and that's quite a personal preference so some people like a really firm waistband some people like a more soft waistband it depends um, maybe what your job is or what your comfort fit preference is so the um, one of the pieces will need to be interfaced so again choose your uh, products carefully so if you want a soft waistband then choose a lightweight interfacing and if you want something firmer you can choose a waistband interfacing. If I am sewing a straight waistband, that's a waistband that's just folded over, then I can use a fuse and fold. This is an interfacing which has a centre line marked along it and it also has a seam allowance on each side. So when you fold your fabric, your interfacing isn't making it too bulky right where you need to press it and have lots of layers. So this is quite a useful waistband product. It's called fuse and fold. And so you can fold, when you've got the fabric on here, you can fold and press your waistband and it's nice and crisp and flat. And when you fold under your seam allowances, it's not too bulky and you will have a one inch waistband. You can add a waistband to a skirt that doesn't have one. Um, so say you've made a skirt and it sits too low, it's on your natural waistline or it's um, sat right on your hips. You can add a waistband so because that will add um, some height to your waist length so it will get it to a different place and you might get a different comfort fit. So you will need to measure the length of your waistband and you will have an underlap that goes underneath a button closure or a zip. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. So the simplest style of waistband is a fold over waistband. So this is my waistband ready to fold over and I need to do some sort of uh, seam allowance finish here. It's from New Look 6456 and it's a wrap skirt. I'm making view D. It's just a little summer wrap skirt. It's made in double gauze. So I haven't overpressed the fabric because that will change the lengths of my waistband pieces. I've marked where the ties attach and I'm going to put that onto the skirt. So my skirt is ready made and left to put on. So when you have a waistband, you'll have a notched edge and an unnotched edge and that will tell you which is the top and which is the bottom. And you will have maybe some notches on your skirt to make sure that you distribute the ease of the waistband evenly around them. Making sure that you prepare your waistband before you put it on will make it much easier. So in the pattern, it asks me to press down 1.5 centimetres along the unnotched edge and I'm going to go and press that accurately. So I'll have one end uh, left open with a raw edge and the interfacing and one edge pressed down. It's easier to do that pressing now rather than when you've got it attached to your skirt so that when you fold it over you'll be able to finish your waistband. And now with the notched edge I can match up the notches. The centre back one, a 
and I can ease these ones in. On the end, I'm, I've got some marks. I've got a little cross there. So that is where I'm going to line up the side fronts. So whatever skirt you're making, whether it's one with a zip in or one with a wrap on the front, you will need to have your seam allowance to attach the end here. A seam allowance is 1.5, so you have got a little bit of wiggle room there. So if you have to um, just let that out a little bit so that you get your waistband on comfy, that's fine too. That's all part of sewing. Okay, let's pin the waistband on. You might have been asked to stay stitch your skirt pieces before you attach them together and that's a really good line for a guide for your stitching. So now we're going to do our 1.5 centimetre seam allowance to attach the waistband on. And you, this is where you need to be accurate because when you fold this over, you want it to land in the right place. Another vital part of waistband making is that you layer some of the seam out, otherwise you'll have too much bulk around your waist. So I'm going to take out half of the seam out on one side. People normally choose the one with the interfacing on because that's the one that's creating the most bulk. You're going to press that seam up towards the waistband. Just be careful that you're not pressing out press that you've already put in. Right, you don't want that to be back flat again. And just be careful if you're pressing from this side so that you can see all your seam allowance going up that you don't melt your iron on the interfacing. So now you've got the waistband coming up really, really smoothly. You've got the seam allowance going the right way. And with a fold over waistband, you and fold over so you've got it smooth on the right side and all the seams enclosed on the inside. Fold it over and pin it. I'm pinning it from the wrong side just to make sure that I've got it caught but you can pin it from the other side. You need to make sure that you can see your pins on the right side that means you're going to catch the fold of the fabric Make sure all your seam allowances are tucked in and pointing up towards the waistband. You can sew this on the machine really carefully with a stitch in the ditch or you can hand sew. So in the pattern it says to stitch in the ditch which is a technique where you sew from the right side right in the fold of that waistband seam line and the tacking has really helped look because I know that if I can see the tacking from the right side then I've definitely caught the fabric on the wrong side. Instructions are just a guide so I'm going to stitch in the ditch that's fine but I have decided at the end I've got my basting stitches here holding my strap in place. I just know that even if I go really carefully um, I've got quite a few layers here so I'm going to start my stitch in the ditch about here go all the way along and then I'm just going to hand sew that end I know I've got a neat finish I've got it all lined up nicely I don't want to have a chewy bit of um, back stitching there so I'm going to hand sew that down on this more delicate fabric so choose your technique just because it says something in the instructions doesn't mean you have to do it the longer you sew, the more you start picking and choosing between the techniques that you're going to use. Here it is, and this is the wrong side, so you can see I have caught the waistband. These are the long tails, and I'm going to hand sew around the ends. Here, look, I haven't quite caught it, so I'm going to hand stitch that down, and that's what you're trying to avoid. I'll hand sew that and join it back into the stitch line. So this is the fold over waistband. 
from New Look 6456, folds over and is stitched in the ditch. It's really simple to do and it's your sort of starter for making waistbands. If you've got a zip in the side of a skirt, then you use the same technique, but you would have one end of your waistband would be longer than the other. So the one that goes under the button is longer than the one that goes over the top. So you might have your waistband cut into pieces, so you might have a back waistband and then you might have um, a front waistband and your back one and your front one might be slightly, one might be slightly longer than the other. So just be aware of which waistband piece goes where and that you get your left and your right the right way round. There are a couple of other ways to finish a waistband. So this is a skirt from New Look 6217. This skirt doesn't have a waistband, it has a bias on the waist. So this time you put the band around, fold it down, this is understitched, and then this is hand stitched down. So this doesn't have a waistband because it sits on the natural lower waist. I can put a waistband on here, but then I'm gonna change the position of how I wear it. So you might finish your waistband with a bias binding. From this same pattern, this is view D. So this is the Capri trousers. But on this one, I wanted to change the waistband a little bit. So this has, um, instead of having the bias just folded to the inside, this one has the wider waistband and have a little waistband showing. And that really sort of finishes off this Capri style pant. And then on the side zip, you just need to put a hook and eye or a trouser hook on the top. On a, a dress zip or a lapped zip, don't forget you'll have your one piece longer than the other. I always, when I cut a waistband piece, I always cut it a little bit longer because if you've made some alterations, so say you, when you do your fitting bit, you take your darts in, which is what I've done here, here and here, then my waistband needs to be a bit shorter. But if I'd let those darts out a touch, then my waistband wouldn't fit. So I always cut my waistband, you know, two centimetres longer than I need it because I can always cut it off here around the zip area, but I can't put any on. This is the Clementine skirt by Merchant and Mills. It's a button fly skirt. So this one is slightly more complicated because it's got a more curved waistline. So this waistband has a join in the centre back. And sometimes, even if a pattern doesn't have a join on the outer waistband, so it asks me to cut it on the fold, I add a little bit of seam allowance and I don't cut it on the fold. I cut it um, using the grain line, obviously, but I add a little bit of seam allowance because that gives me a little bit more um, fitting room when you've got a curved waistband. Because if your waistband is curved, you, if you cut some off the end to make it shorter, then this curve will then be in the wrong place. So the best place to fit your waistband is from the centre back. So it's vital before you start putting your waistband on that you have done all of the fitting that you possibly can. So try your skirt on. Um, if you need to make any changes to any darts to bring it in or let it out, do that now. If you um, need to let the side seams in or out, do that now because those will measurements here around the waist will affect your waistband. Right, let's have a look at the waistband pieces. So on this pattern, because the uh, waistband is on a slight curve, then I have done that little turn up that I did before, pressed up the inside seam, but this time I've used a line of stay stitching. So I have sewn a line of stay stitching 1.5 centimeters from the edge and then when I pressed it, I could get that curve there nice and smooth. So it's the inner waistband. You'll know it's the inner waistband because it's the one with the folded edge. And then you will have one that is the outer waistband and they will be joined together at that centre back seam that I made. And you will have the curves matching. The shorter curve, 
is the top of your waistband and the wider curve is the bottom of your waistband. I've also marked on my buttonhole. This is my outer waistband and I'm going to unzip the zip on the skirt and then pin the waistband to the skirt. I'm leaving that 1.5 centimetre seam allowance on the end and that's for joining on the two pieces together. And I'm going to pin this on all the way around. So I'll be matching up that back centre seam. And actually, look, in a busy fabric, you wouldn't notice if the back centre seam wasn't in exactly the right place. If it has to move around either side of that centre line, it, you won't notice it in a pattern fabric. It's better to have um, a waistband that fits you snugly. You have to decide what sort of finish you want on your skirt or trousers. This is the same method as making jeans. And I'm going to pin the waistband to the edge. And we're going to repeat some of those techniques that we did on the fold over waistband and take out and lay a seam. Press your waistband so that the seam allowance is pointing up inside the waistband so that when we put the facing on everything will be tucked inside. From the right side it looks smooth and from the wrong side we're now ready to put the facing on to cover this over. With your skirt wrong side out you can now match up the raw edges so you will have a little bit hanging over look on the end there because you're going to sew parallel to that zip seam around the waistband and the same on the other end and then you will create a little pointed corner and you can um, take the corner off so that you can get a really nice point on the end of your waistband. You can see there where I made that one a little bit longer because I wasn't sure which was um, my left and my right side so I just wanted a little insurance there so I have a little bit extra on each end but it's made sure that my waistband isn't going to be too small so I have this is the fly guard on the inside so I have one that's the underlap, so this one's the underlap, this one's the overlap with the buttonhole on. So we just need to prepare these corners. Depends how thick your fabric is, how much you need to take away. You will see, I haven't pointed that out yet, but you can see that that now runs smoothly from the fly shield to the waistband. I'm going to press all of this so that I get a really good finish and my accurate measurement, and then we'll look at the facing once more. That stay stitching line is keeping that curve really nice. And I've pressed the top waistband so that it folds over really well and we're going to pin again like we did before making sure that our pin is just below the waistband. If you're pretty clever you can pin from the right side and that will eliminate your tacking so you can pin it from the right side and just make sure you've caught it on the other so whichever way feels more comfortable for you. And then we can stitch in the ditch like we did before. Again at the ends of your waistbands, nobody's looking on the inside of your waistband but I like to just finish my waistband ends off by hand because sometimes it gets really thick there where you've got all of those layers of seam. I use, uh, I make sure that I've got long tails from my sewing machine and then I use those to sew in the end. I'm going to do the same on this end as well. So just pull the threads to the back, thread up my needle and then just sew in that last bit. 
There we are. So the waistband goes along the zip guard. So this piece of waistband is longer than this piece of waistband. And this one joins flushly onto the end of the zip fly. I've just got a buttonhole left to do on there. So that is a curved waistband with a facing. A few other things that you can think about if you're putting a waistband in with a facing is to make your facing a different colour. So this is my pair of dawn jeans. I have orange top stitching thread and so I have an orange um, facing inside and that's made it nice and soft actually. So rather than having denim on the inside, um, it's a bit thick and rough. I've got a soft cotton poplin. Or on another Clementine skirt that I've got here, because I was using denim, I've overlocked the edge of that facing and um, stitched in the ditch. So I don't have lots and lots of layers. So that's another technique. If you thought that you'd got your outer waistband, that would be two layers of fabric. And then your inner waistband or waistband facing, that's another two layers of fabric. So you'd have four layers of fabric here on the straight bit. But if you get to this bit here and you've got lots of um, bulk, especially here, look, I've got the pocket facings as well. Then here I've overlocked the edge and it's just hanging freely, but it's all neat. Sometimes you see on um, ready to wear clothes and you can do it yourself if you want to, you can bind that edge with um, a bias binding or a ribbon or a tape, and then you don't need to fold under so much. So that's a technique to use if you've got very thick layers of fabric. You might also be top stitching your waistband. So this um, has one layer of top stitching around the top, not just to stabilize the waistband and stop it stretching out, but you can match that with another layer along the bottom if you want. But all those are style choices. There's an example of where my center back seam wasn't in the right place, but really only I know it's there. My top's normally coming over that. I'd rather have it more comfortable than having a seam matched up and then uh, running. I must have run out of fabric as I'd got to here. So that's another reason to just cut your waistbands just a little bit longer for a, a bit of just in case room. I appreciate I've shown you a lot of things there, um, but depending on your pattern choice, your fabric choice, how you like to finish your garments on the inside, um, how picky you are about what it looks like on the inside are all factors in how you choose to put your waistband on. Just because an instruction says um, how to put it on, you can sort of switch that up a little bit um, to make it work for your project or to make it work for your fit and comfort. If you have made a project, we would love to see it. So do make an account with Minerva and share your makes with us over there. Um, we would love to see what you've made and you'll get a lot of love from our sewing community. Thank you very much for watching. Do call again for more tutorials, sew alongs and fabric focus videos soon. Bye bye. Thank you.